Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about the four cornerstone routines of the Fly Lady program, and they are the morning routine, the evening routine, the laundry routine, and the after dinner routine. Oftentimes those are combined into just the morning and evening routine, but I like to split them out so you can really get a handle on them. Um, these four cornerstone routines are what are going to carry you through flying alone. So when you don't have anyone to be accountable to, when my fly babies graduate, the, these four routines have got to be pat, down pat, or they'll end up back where they were. So I want you all to take advantage of this, and that is get those four routines down. So what are the routines? The morning routine has a lot of things in it, but I'm gonna narrow it down to just four or five basic things. And those are get up in the morning and make your bed, go to the bathroom and brush your teeth, wash your face and moisturize your skin. Brush your hair, put on your clothes all the way down to your shoes, wipe out your sink, swish your toilet bowl, go to the kitchen, make some breakfast, empty the dishwasher or put your dishes away from the night before. Ta-da! Now what are some things you could add to this? You could add, check your calendar. What's for dinner? Um, what's the weather like? And meditation. These are things you can put in there. Now let's go to the evening routine, which prepar prepares you for the morning routine. So the evening routine is, first of all, you have to go to bed at a decent hour. So figure out how many hours of sleep you need, seven or eight. Most people need seven or eight hours of sleep. You know, when you sleep, that's when your body regenerates all the cells in your body. It's when your body repairs itself. And for children, it's when they grow. So this is the time you need to allow yourself to regenerate your body. If you think you really can get along with four hours sleep, month after month, year after year, you'll find at the end that you're going to be all worn out way too soon. So don't let that happen to you because once it's happened, it's too late. So really focus on getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Some of you may need more, but I think seven to eight is what they say is the general average. Um, anyway, go to bed at a decent hour. So that means 30 minutes before bedtime, you need to do this evening routine. Now, sometimes I recommend that you do this evening routine right after supper because you're gonna be tired. Maybe you've had a long day, maybe it's late. Um, so if you're, not, if you're not going anywhere, what's wrong with doing your evening routine right away? So here it is. It is decide your evening bedtime and then go to the kitchen and turn on the dishwasher. Put out a new towel, wipe the sink out with the old towel, shine it up. Go to your bathroom, take your clothes off, put them in the dirty clothes if they're dirty. If they're not dirty, hang them up, fold them, put them away. Brush your teeth, wash your face, um, put on your PJs. You know, you might take a bath at night or a shower at night, doesn't matter. It's when you do that, it could be the morning or the evening. And um, get in the bed. I mean, super simple, just do that. Now there are things you can add to this at will, as well. You might want to look at your calendar again. I have to look twice a day because, you know, memory doesn't serve me well. My my calendar serves me well. So I check my calendar, I check the weather, I do meditation, I do yoga. There's some things that I have in my routine that I elect to put in, but those are electives. You have to at least do the basics. Okay, so get those down. What is the, um, what's the next one? Laundry routine. Laundry routine means Figure out how many loads of laundry your, your family creates every week. So let's say they create 10 loads of laundry. Decide if you want to wash laundry five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week. So let's say you chose five. In this case, you need to do two loads of laundry a day just to maintain the, the 10 that you make. And I would say you wouldn't want more than four loads waiting to be washed at any time. So if you have 15 loads of laundry, you need to get 11 loads of laundry done just to bring you to that. And I don't want you to ever do 11 loads of laundry in one day. So what I would say is, I have 14 loads of laundry. My family's gonna create seven more. Seven plus 14 is 21. Um, so for the next 10 days, I'm going to do, you no, know, for the next five days, I'm going to do four loads of laundry a day, five or six days, and that'll catch you up. And then you can start doing your two loads a day, Monday through Friday, if that's what you want to do. So you have to do a little work on that, little mental gymnastics, but it's not hard. You can do this. It's simple math. And you know what doing laundry is? 
It's putting the dirty clothes in the washing machine with some soap and washing it, transferring them to the dryer, turning it on. Okay, those two things, those two mechanical actions are not hard. Put it in, turn it on. Transfer it over, turn it on. So that's really not doing the laundry. Doing the laundry is when the dryer's done. It's folding the clothes, hanging the clothes up, taking them and physically putting them away or putting them in your children's room and watching them put them away because you have to inspect what you expect. If you just leave it in your child's room, those clean clothes, I guarantee you, are going to end up in the dirty clothes again in the folded state that they were in when you put them in their room. How do I know this? Well, I had children. I know how children are. You have to inspect what you expect. So. Or as my husband from Alabama says, you have to inspect what you expect. So that's what you have to do. Just hope that rings a bell with you and you can keep that in your mind. Because as a parent, that's your job, is to inspect what you expect. Because children need that support. And they'll need it until they leave for college. And then when they come home from college, hopefully not. But if they live with you again, they have to have it again. It's something about living with your parents. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so laundry has to be done. And so that's your laundry routine. And then the other thing that you want to do is your after dinner routine, super simple routine. I don't know why everybody falls down on this routine, but it's so easy. You've made your meal. You've eaten your meal. The dishes go in the dishwasher, which you emptied in the morning in the morning um, routine. So you don't have a full dishwasher, or you shouldn't, between breakfast and dinner time, it should still have room. So put your dishes in, your silverware in, your glasses in, um, and then wash up won't, which won't, what won't fit in there. So usually that's pots and pans. If you have room, put them in. If your dishwasher can do handle pots and pans, if not, hand wash them, put them out to drain. And some people wash their plastic where it's up to you, but you get the idea. You wash your dishes and or put them in the dishwasher and let them drain. Wipe out the sink, wipe off the countertops, and wipe the stove. This is not scrubbing. This is just blessing, just a quick little wipe. That's it. That's your after dinner routine. Now, here's what happens if you don't do it. If you don't do these things because you're sick or someone died or the dog swallowed a needle or whatever happens because life happens. If you don't maintain these routines during those times, you will turn around one day and say, what happened? And you know, it's gross to have dishes piled all over the counters and sinks. And it's gross to have dirty dishes in the dishwasher too. And it's gross to have laundry piled up on the count, on the, on the bed or every flat surface you can find. It's, that's not fun. That's not fun and it's not peaceful. So when life happens, if you have these routines down, they will be rote. But the only make, way to make them a habit is to do them every day without fail. Every day. I don't care if you can't really swish and swipe your toilet. Just wipe the sink out with a cloth and go once around the toilet with a Johnny brush. Just have a placeholder. You need to do them every day because when the worst happens, and it will, because we live in a life, um, you're going to have these things to be a balm to you. Because when you do these things, it gives you an, a, a little measure of control in an uncontrolled situation. So really and truly, I'm telling you from my heart, do these four routines. And I will throw in one more thing, and that is to finish the process. That means if you pick up a pen, when you're done with it, it goes back where it belongs. Because one thing we do as, as sidetracked people is we're not aware of what's in our hands. That's why even I have to have my husband call my telephone and say, you know, help me find my phone. I can't find it. Call my phone for me. It's because there's so many ping pong balls going off in our heads that we don't focus on what we're doing. So for that, I would say, write a to-do list. I keep mine in my planner. Anytime a ping pong ball goes off in my head, it goes in my planner. So I don't have to think about it and I can focus on what I'm doing. So I'd like you to really think about these things. But the most important part of this is those four routines, the four basic routines, morning routine, evening routine, after dinner routine, laundry routine. You've got this. You can do this. I know you can. Have a fantastic day and good luck. Keep going.